Alexander. And one! How can we get Xavier to the next level? And that's all we cared about every single night. The Xavier Musketeers have enjoyed a history-making season. Getting to the Elite Eight is uh, an incredible moment. I think we'll be a force to be reckoned with. Raymond. Yes! B.J. Raymond. Second free ball of the afternoon. And what do you know? Xavier making a run. The mindset was just to never take a day off. Always play hard. Um, and it, it was shown on C.J and uh, Drew Lavender's shoes when they had nope on their shoes. Nope meaning on their shoes means nope, you can't take a break right now. You know, guys didn't care about when you go out and get mine and, you know, it's my night tonight. It was more about, you know, what's best for Xavier. All for one and one for all was the perfect motto for this team, which rode on selfish play, great senior leadership, and withering defense into the greatest season-long run in Xavier's basketball history. The 2007-2008 men's basketball team won a school record 30 games rose to the top 10 in the national polls, and advanced to the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament for the second time in five years. In the process, Xavier erased any doubts about this program ranking among the very best in all of college basketball. To me, it starts with a team willing to play defense to the best of their ability. If you really think about that, if you have that in place, it's really hard to be selfish on offense. But at the very beginning of the season, Coach Sean Miller had a gap in his defense. To fill it, he turned to one of the team's leading offensive players and scores, Stanley Burrell, and asked him to take on a new role. Once I realized that it did have such a huge impact on our team and was helping us win so many games, I was more than willing to take on that role and help our team in any way. And it goes back to, you know, everybody having that commitment to the team and, and that togetherness and that sacrifice and whatever it takes to help the team win. And, you know, that was my role. What he did on the defensive end of the court is something that will have a legacy attached to him from now and in many years to come as we recruit new players into our program of using him, I think, really as the ultimate example of unselfishness. Xavier teams have traditionally been led by seniors, and this year was certainly no exception. Josh Duncan, Stanley Burrell, and Drew Lavender all had tremendous seasons. Each stepped up and provided great leadership when it was needed most. During the month of February in this season and through March, there wasn't a better forward playing college basketball than Josh Duncan. He made big plays, uh, learned to be more aggressive, closer to the basket, became a, a true leader. Drew Lavender, obviously from the moment he touched the ground here at Xavier, uh, he became something that's much needed in, it, in any team, and that is just a, a pure quarterback, a, a coach on the floor, someone who makes the game easier for his teammate. Stanley Burrell, he became not only a better player all around, not just a scorer, but became an incredible teammate. And I think it's fairly obvious he was our team's heart and soul this year. The Musketeers began the season by playing possibly the toughest non-conference schedule in school history. They played and defeated teams such as Indiana, Kent State, Creighton, Kansas State, Virginia, and Auburn, and nearly defeated a Tennessee team that later rose to a number one national ranking. You learn more about your team when you challenge them greatly. And just watching our team beat Kent State and come back with unbelievable purpose against a great Indiana team at the time and be able to win that championship on a neutral court, I thought was a telling sign for me that this team was really special and we had it in us um, throughout the course of, of the season. After all, this week's AP poll ranks the Muskies the ninth best team in the country the highest such ranking in the Sean Miller era. Throughout the season, the national media lavished unprecedented praise and attention on the team and program. Drew Lavender even became the first Xavier player to grace the cover of Sports Illustrated. With another A-10 championship under its belt, Xavier geared up for its third straight NCAA tournament appearance and was rewarded for a season well played with a number three seed for only the second time in school history. When I saw that we were gonna play Georgia in the first game, it was an uncomfortable feeling because part of what you earn as a number three seed is, I think, some first game jitters from your opponent, a team maybe that hasn't been there and done it, that hasn't been on that big stage, uh, maybe as much as you have. It was kind of like, wow, we were just cheering for them, hoping they could get in, and now we have to go against them. Xavier was down by nine at the half of that first round game, but the Musketeers were not done playing basketball. At halftime, after Coates did his little screaming, 
a little screaming session, of course, yelling at us. And we knew that he didn't have to do that. We knew there was no tomorrow. And one thing about this team that's great is that when our back is against the wall, we fight and uh, we fought. And uh, if we stopped believing at any point in that time, we wouldn't have made that run that we made. And uh, I think it just showed that the close games that we were in that early in the year with St. Louis and St. Joe's and, and Dayton and things like that, um, it paid off at that point. Xavier fought well enough to advance to the second round and to date with the Purdue Boilermakers. A year earlier, Xavier's season had ended in the second round of the NCAA tournament with an excruciating overtime loss to Ohio State. The memory of that defeat motivated this team all season long and made moving on to the Sweet 16 even more satisfying. It was an incredible feeling, I think, for everyone involved. It, it reflected a year's worth of work to be back at that and, and break through. And uh, at that moment, to me, that was one of the greatest feelings that I've ever had as a coach because not just beating Purdue and getting to the Sweet 16, but knowing how much we had invested for a year's worth of work to only have that opportunity in 40 minutes, can, can you do it this time around? Uh, that being our goal, you know, getting to the Sweet 16. Xavier started quickly against West Virginia but couldn't hold the lead. The Mountaineers rallied behind their star, Joe Alexander, whose late basket forced the game into overtime. That set the stage for a heroic performance from B.J. Raymond, who had been playing anything but heroic during regulation play. I was just out there taking up space. And um, that's not the way I wanted to go out my junior year, and that's not the way that I wanted this, the great senior class that we had to go out. Uh, so when the opportunity came, I just decided to make plays. You know what I'm saying? This is family. You can't let them down. A couple things happened in overtime. Number one, we got down by a significant margin. And once again, I think it's so easy for a team to panic when that happens. Uh, number one, we didn't panic. We, we stayed true to, we have a saying, and, and the players I'm sure will share it with you, do what we do. My five second count was running out and stood across. You know, BJ, he don't need too much time to get his shot off. And he caught it, loaded it, let it go. You know, the rest is history. You know, and, just really proud of him for staying poised and staying with it regardless of the adversity he was facing throughout the first 40 minutes. He just stayed with it and he stepped up big for us. You know, B.J. Raymond, the shots that he made, I think will forever be etched in Xavier history. It's one of the best feelings I ever had in college basketball, so. Up next, the UCLA Bruins in the number one seed, a team that had appeared in the final four the last two years. Xavier needed to be at its very best to win, but it wasn't in the cards. Kevin Love and the Bruins rolled to victory and ended Xavier's season one game short of the Final Four. I mean, we just didn't have our night that, that we needed, you know, and even though the margin of victory, you know, it really does speak for itself, I feel like we really didn't give, give UCLA our best, our best punch. You know, we really didn't come out and play the way that Xavier can play, and, and that's the only thing that's kind of hard about it, you know, knowing that we didn't really go out giving our best punch. but. It was a great opportunity to be so close to the Final Four is something that you'll never forget. At the same time, you look back on it and you wish you did some things different. And, you know, it is what it is now, but we're just blessed to have the opportunity to be there. Right? It was more than just a blessing that Xavier's basketball team reached new heights. It was a combination of commitment, teamwork, fearlessness, and aunt selfishness, all factors that will keep the Xavier program moving forward. Xavier basketball has really been in a state of continual improvement over the last 25 years or so. Uh, year in, year out, we've, we've pushed the envelope further and further. Uh, and I think that's one of the terrific things about our program is that we're never satisfied. You know, we're now one of a very elite group of schools that have been to multiple elite eights in the last five years. We're the only private school in that list. And I think people now have to take us seriously uh, in the basketball world and beyond as a program that really is a player on the national level. How do you do that, number one? Fearless in scheduling, but also fearless with a plan. Um, and, and that's what we've established here, that we're willing to play the best programs in college basketball, home and away, on neutral courts, so that our team can have the best chance of getting an at-large bid every year to the NCAA tournament. But a great program takes more than just great scheduling. So when you talk about Xavier in recruiting, it starts with a degree starts with, I think, our, our location. And then the word development is at the forefront of 
of who we are. We have evidence that this place works. And I think it also affects the current players because they know that while they're here, that they are improving, they are getting better, and that one day maybe they can be that, that James Posey, that David West, that they were promised they could be when, when they were recruited. When a recruit asks why Xavier, the easiest response is why not Xavier? Uh, you look at an environment that has an amazing level of commitment from absolutely every area. The player has to understand that first and foremost, we are here for them. They aren't here for us. That the university exists for them to grow and develop and to become an educated individual while they are on the Xavier campus. I work for Sister Fleming, as did Pete Gillen, as did Skip Prosser, as did Thad Mata. I mean, if we run into a problem, uh, it's an easy solution. Whatever she says goes. At first, I was like, man, all these hours of study hall. But then when you get to the end, you understand that it's all worth it. She's going to put you in a great position to be able to graduate on time and, and just to have a great academic experience while you're here at Xavier. The family environment, the family atmosphere here at Xavier, you know, it's second to none. You really don't feel like you're out there by yourself at a big university and I'm on my own, have to hang in there academically. It's more like we're all in this together, we'll help you. I think the fact that we've had graduation rates and now academic performance or academic progress rates uh, that rank in the very top of the national, uh, the national scales speaks volumes about who we are and, and really attracts a certain type of young person. Folks that don't value education typically don't look to Xavier and that's okay with us. It's a year-long thing as you talk to the people that I talk to, whether it's you know Dick Vitale or Jay Billis or Andy Katz or you know Jeff Goodman. Uh, the main theme that you want to get across to them is we belong in the major players, and I think that is a major shift from uh, 20, 25 years ago as well. I believe everybody wants us to have, and we believe it's very possible to have resources uh, in place that allow our coaches, our players, our entire program to do the things necessary to be a truly national level program. I don't think we could find a better fit uh, than Sean Miller. He's, he's a, young, a young man that, uh, again, I believe his best days are yet ahead of him. And he also has a great sense of what can be accomplished in Xavier. Xavier is on the uprise. We won a national championship. We won our first appearance to the Final Four. Teams don't want to be, Elite Eight isn't good enough anymore in my eyes. Uh, plenty of teams have been there, been there and done that. Um, we want more. We're expecting more. Our fans are expecting more. We're expecting more. And we gotta, we gotta deliver. To be big time, we expect people to support Xavier at a big time level. And we're very close. Mike Babinski will say it all the time. We are very close. And the fact that we're getting a taste of that right now is really exciting people. The All for One Club and fan support uh, is essential for our program to continue the success that we've had. Um, we have been able to raise money through the All for One Club donations and individual families and people have stepped up even in the last few years that have given our players that edge. What happened this season, making it to the Elite Eight, is something that we've prepared for, we've planned for, we expect to be in this position more often than not. Uh, and while we recognize that that's not easy and we have to earn it each and every year, we do expect to be here again and again and again and ultimately take our turn in the Final Four and compete for a national championship.